on this special welcoming songs of inspiration for all beer friends we are welcoming you once again to our program for you and for all beer friends today but before we start we want to drop a few words for all beer friends wherever you are today you are a beer friend do you know your identity do you know where you belong? Do you know what Biafra means for you to be? Do you know that it takes a lot for you to be a Biafra? We are Biaframs not just in mouth making, but doing what makes you a Biafra. We are in a special way welcoming you all to our today broadcast today is a special day for Biafrans. today is a special day for every believer that biafra will come one day we can't wait any longer to start telling the international community that it is time the biafrans of the southeastern part of nigeria be let go we have tried we have in fact be patient enough to be called nigeria because it's obvious that bia france has no place in that entity called nigeria but before we proceed i want to let everyone listening to me now that no matter what it is we remain nigerians by citizen and bia france by indigenous people working very hard to have our freedom from that entity called itself nigeria welcome to biafra voice international welcome to biafra voice in new york as you know and as i've said before my names are onye kachuku abaslim welcoming you in a special way to our program today hope you enjoy it i want you to get ready bring your brothers together your sisters everybody that love listening to the word of biafra tell them it is time we march on the fence it is time we celebrate and talk biafra Oh 
Yeah, with that sound, special sound, talking about Biafra, we are welcoming you to this program today. Today, I have in my studio special guest, a great Biafra, a man of principle, a man who loves everything about Biafra and has vowed to give everything for Biafra for the good and for the emancipation of his people. I'm welcoming him today in our midst. In the person of Mr. Egon, all known as Oracle. Hey, Mr. Egon, if you are around, please, I would like you to greet our wonderful people who are all over the world in Biafra, Iran, in diaspora, in Europe, Asia, Australia, any part of the country. I want you to, in a special way, greet and welcome our people to our today broadcast. For inviting me to this very program. Thank you for initiating this very noble program, a program that is meant to inform our people, the Biafra people, of their situation in Nigeria and in the entire African continent. Thank you once again, friends. Thank you once again, fellow countrymen and women. We are here to address ideas, to discuss issues, as these issues will benefit us all. I am here at the Beck and Call. I am here to contribute my own quota in whatever capacity. Just as I try to do it, I equally beg on our fellow dear friends from, from here and there, go to my diaspora, to join us in this program, and then harness our ideas and find a way forward. A way that will lead us back to Zion. That's very Zion. It's not that place in Biafra land. Thank you once again as I wait here to give you my own ideas and you're going to listen to your own ideas for us to move forward. 
Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, Mr. Obidi. Mr. Obidi is now the also anchor of Biafra Voice in Germany. Mr. Obid, a wonderful man, a great Igbo man living in Germany, working hard for the unification of all Igbo people, especially all Biafrans in diaspora and in Biafra land. We thank you very much for the time you've decided to be part of this great media that is made to inform our people, to lead our people to Zion, and to help our people towards our freedom. Thank you very much, my brother, and thank you for being part of the program today. In a special way, I want to also use this opportunity to inform our listeners, wherever you are today, that we, Biafra Voice is a big station for Biafra people, is the media arm of indigenous people of Biafra, we have our substations in UK, in United States, in Germany, and in Biafra land. And the, as you all know, the normally we used to have our director here on the studio all the time, but we couldn't have him this time around because of one uh, dedication or the other. But we hope that he will be joining us anytime from now. Before we move on, I want to use this opportunity to remind you to appreciate the efforts of some of Great Beer Friends, our patrons, all those that have been our uh, benefactors of what we are doing, those supporting what we are doing, those helping us to recover, especially when we fell. No matter where they are, we thank them all and we hope we'll be moving higher. There is no more going back. In that world, I am also welcoming our patrons, Biafrans in Egypt, Biafrans in Brazil, Biafrans in, in uh, uh, what they call it, Nomsland, Biafrans all over the world, in Ghana, in Cameroon. In a special way, I'm welcoming all volunteers because they made this program today's, today possible by their encouragement, by their words, and by their support. We thank you very much, Biafran volunteers, wherever you are. And we, as we vow, I want you to keep to your vow to make sure that Biafran come to be through your selfless service without corruption. We hope, by God's grace, we will achieve this special or uh, 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 plan and agenda and the steps that we have built for ourselves by god's grace it shall come into accomplishment thank you all very much for being part of the program today and uh, very soon we will be going straight to our main uh, uh talk of today but before that uh, let us take a little music while we wait for our listeners and our special guests to get ready for the discussion of today don't go away because we still have a lot for you today. Thank you. Never end, the end never came, but it came like the rivers Moses struck a Egypt. O bara bido sibe, o bene bido bube, o boni we bido bube, bube ni we. Ask for the message of Allah for the agony of the child. Yes. The offer of, do you remember the offer of? Do you remember the offer of? Do you really want to tell the story? The story, the story. The offer of. Can you remember the offer of? Do you really want to hear the story? The story, 
the story. Yafarobi, Yafara, Narari, Nabagana, Nkiji, Jiseike, Makana, China, Chiji, Makana, Nkiji, Ka, cause the tear is still the drum. The index still in the trigger, your blood still the cry, your name shall survive from a filler generation as the father passes the story to the young son. Tell me, with the death she overcame her, the shadows to the clash, but the valors of our leaders, but shall never be in vain her. Najika, ya ansa, neto batara soye ya, na mi kuma ka salama, na samu hakur in the half of a yellow sun. Listen to the Yafura, listen to the children, I will shall live again. The Yafura, can you remember the Yafura? The Yafura, do you really want to hear the story? The story, the story. All your fighters, all your tanks, and all your soldiers against the boy, holding a stone, standing there, all alone. In his eyes, I see the sun. In his smile, I see the moon. And I wonder, I only wonder. The story, the story, the story. The opera. Can you remember the opera? The opera. Do you really want to hear the story? The story, the story. The OG Achisie, Okayabu Haniba, Alexander Majebo, Oboyabu Commander, Major General Efia, Okayabu Onisi, Major General Patrick. Okwayabu Izoku, Navy Captain Anuku, Okwayabu Mama's Boy, Gabriel Anyebuna, Okwayabu Captain Blood, Richard Hieto, Okwayabu Dick Tiger, Colonel Obogu Kalu, Colonel Ademo Yega, Colonel Michael Evans, Colonel Olisakwe, Colonel Okwechime, Colonel Owatwegu, Brigadier Coleman Wawo, Brigadier Tony Eze, Colonel Victor Banjo, Colonel M.M. Omora, Colonel Festus Akaha, Colonel Patrick Awuna, Colonel Judas O.K., Inspector P.I.O.K.K., Colonel Usudo, Colonel Udiaja, Colonel Achiba, Colonel Oguniwe, Colonel Dihanacho, Colonel Obiora, Colonel Obara, Colonel Wajeye, Colonel Eze, Captain Stain and Von Rassen, Okofabu Masenaris, Chalo, Ikemba, Okwayabu General, Ezibu, Buruburu, Chalo, Okwayabu Chiogu, General, Chukwe Meka, Ojimebu, Ojuko, Trebo to you, Onyike. Me overall, can you remember me overall? Do you really want to hear the story? The story, the story. Fellow dear friends, on the occasion of your rally to demonstrate your solidarity with the struggles of your kith and kin back home, I send to you all fraternal greetings. As one who has been entrusted with the onerous responsibilities of guiding our young republic through these difficult times, I must confess that it is always a source of deep pleasure and encouragement to me to receive assurances of the support of the people and their continuing determination to persevere until complete victory is achieved. It is, therefore, with feelings of unbounded pleasure and deep appreciation 
that I salute this august gathering. You are all aware that for over four months now, Nigeria has been waging a war of aggression to destroy Biafra and her people. This invasion by Nigerian hordes was mounted because the people of the former eastern region of Nigeria were forced on May the 30th, 1967, to declare themselves the independent state of Biafra in order to assure the security of their lives and property. As you are aware, the people of the former eastern region of Nigeria had believed as if it were an article of faith in the concept of a united Nigeria. No section of the then Federation of Nigeria had worked as assiduously for the attainment of this ideal as did Eastern Nigeria and her people. No section had made as many and varied positive contributions towards the realization of true unity. Having over the years spearheaded the movement for closer union, having demonstrated our faith in Nigeria in concrete terms by allowing our sons and daughters to sojourn in other parts of the country, thereby contributing tremendously to the development of such areas to the neglect of our own, it was a hard decision for us to take to opt out of a federation in which we had invested so much but we had no real choice. Over the years, our erstwhile compatriots had made it clear in unmistakable terms that they did not want us in the Federation. Since the 1950s, our people were expropriated and discriminated against in parts of Nigeria other than their own. Furthermore, the experience of the three harrowing waves of remorseless genocide in 1945, 1953, and especially in 1966, involving a total of nearly 40,000 dead and countless others maimed or destitute, provided an object lesson which could not but be taken seriously. Self-preservation is probably the strongest human instinct, and it is this that has compelled the harassed and persecuted people of eastern Nigeria to seek refuge in their own home and amongst their kindred. As a proverb of one of our Biafran languages has it, a man who is rejected by others cannot reject himself. The inordinate ambition of the House of Fulani oligarchy to continue to dominate the whole of what was formerly the Federation of Nigeria, the unrealistic desire to acquire the wealth and resources of Biafra while rejecting their people, the mad and homicidal desire to exterminate from the face of the earth 14 million Biafrans drove Gawan and his clique towards unleashing a costly war to attain the untenable, the subjugation of this young but promising. Even with the vast resources of the former Federation of Nigeria with which to prosecute the war, even with the active collaboration of those international opportunists, Britain and the Soviet Union, an unholy alliance of vested interests, even with the attempt to subvert our government by suborning some of our highly placed military and civilian personnel, an attempt which was foiled at the nick of time, the one has failed to make good his book. Hello, dear friends. We are sorry we can continue with that special word from our general, Mr. Chukwemeka Odmego Chuku. I think we have to move on because if we continue to listen to that word, which is exactly what is happening in our land today. Which is exactly all he said is what is happening to us, dear friends, today. In every part of that Nigeria, you see Biafra being intimidated, Biafra being dealt with.
even though we are the best people who build the foundation of which most of these areas are growing today. Yet, they still see us as enemy. They kill us. They deal with us. They do everything and get away with it. Is it not time we think and make decisions of the way forward for ourselves? They kill us. They do a lot of stuff with us. Why are we still living in those places? Why we should we continue to live where we are not wanted? We have vast resources in our life. Why can't we go home? and find a way to improve our home. Of accepting the fact it is very, very piteous when I hear our general talking about the circumstances that led to civil war happening right away in our time. The other day you see Biafra scattered all over the country. They are in Lagos, they are in Kaduna, they are We've been killed in thousands in the northern part of Nigeria. And in Lagos, the vow to send us into the lagoon if we don't believe in their way. Are we slaves? Are Biafrans slaves? This is the question we are going to look into today. It is it not time we make serious decisions? But it's not all about making decisions. But how to carry out the decision. Today in my studio, I have Mr. Obidi Egon to join me in discussing this. And like I said, it is not about making the decision, but we are with the decision leaders. How many of us are ready to abide by the decision? So today, we have someone in our line as our topic for today is do we have a place in Nigeria? If we don't, what is our fate? And how are we going to take this, our fate, into our hand? So, my brother, uh, Mr. Obidi, uh, you've had everything that uh, um, our general, Dr. Chukwemeka Odume Gojuku, is talking about. This issue actually happens 40 years ago before the and uh, as we can know it is this issue it was this issue that led to the biafran uh, war that we all uh, know about and you see the same issue repeating itself in our time what do you have to tell biafrans about that thank you very much and thank you a thousand times honestly Nigeria is a contraction. It is not a home. If Nigeria is a home, it is a home to the Yorubas, to the houses, but not to the Igbo man. There are a lot of problems, evils, but even Nigeria today. These evils we are foreseen long, long ago by our general Chukwemeka Otimego Joko. By the time we took us all these things, many people are still in the dark ages. Today, what we saw almost 50 years ago are uh, now happening to us. But the question arises, are we well accommodated in the entity called Nigeria? My answer is no, and a thousand times no. We are other strangers in Nigeria. And it is high time we went home. Nigeria is not a home to the average Igbo man. Nigeria is not a home to a Biafra man. Then the question is, why are we wasting our time in the entity called Nigeria? The problem is this. The average Igbo man has taken his glory away. We abandoned our heritage. We left the most ennobling pains that make us evils. We buried our honors in the past and on the ground. What do we have? Today, lesson as a Igbo man is, we have remained a slave to other parts of Nigeria. 
And in fact, what would I get from? What is their problem with the average ego man? We have left our traditional heritage. Every year, every part of Nigeria, you find the average ego man struggling and building cities. Go to Lagos. 70% of the property there belong to the Igbos. Go to Abuja, the same thing. Go to Medjugorje, go to Kano, go to every part of Nigeria. Igbos are everywhere developing. The question arises, why can't we, with all the resources we have, move down and go to the upper land, to that particular Zion that offers us comfort, and then build our society? Whether we like it or not, Nigeria is not a home. Take for example, in the north, every part of the north, Jesus have been massacred on daily basis. In the western part of Nigeria, what we call the Yoruba Axis, people's Jesus have been insulted. Now, how do the Biafrans, how do the Igbos take these insults? We do nothing. Instead, we allow our enemies. To keep on insulting us without reacting. It cannot continue to be like that all the time. It is high time the difference got up and said, We are going home. Let's take, for example, just as Biafras are scattered in every part of the world, it equally happened to the Israelis in the years ago. Why they were scattered in every part of the world? A time came that was precisely in 1882. When the Israelis, or rather the Jewish people, every part of the world decided to go back to that promised land. And what did they say to our brothers and sisters in exile? If I help not myself, who will help me? That's the question. If we, the people, cannot help ourselves, who is going to help us? Nobody. It is high time we evacuated Nigeria and go back to Biafra land. That is our home. But what is the problem with the average evil man? The problem is manifold. We, the Igbos, we don't have a leader we honor. Look at the Yorubas. What's a particular up at us? Everybody bows and listens. Go to house and land. What's the name at us? Everybody bows and listens. But in Biafra land, you need the land. Everybody is a leader. Everybody is talking. This is the major problem. The most outstanding problem, the devil, the evil nation. See, there's no body to lead us. I think that it's high time we ask ourselves, let us have a leader who will go for us and fight our wars. We have to go home. Nigeria is not a home. Nigeria is not a prison yard. Nigeria is a nation of shopkeepers. And Nigeria offers us nothing tangible. The only place we can call our home. Where we have to go and feel at home indeed is a Biafra land. We are calling on all the Biafrans in diaspora. That is high time we got up and say back to Zion. And Zion, Biafra land, we must go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother, Mr. Egono. Uh, I think uh, you hit the point where it's supposed to be. Um, it is time we go home. He said it. We've been saying it times without numbers, but our people will listen. They want to be killed. They want to be drawn to the lagoon. They want them, all of them, to be to to be uh, uh, pushed into the Lagos uh, 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 mainland or to to the rivers or to to get drawn before they will listen to the voice of freedom, to the voice of reason. I don't know actually what is wrong with our people. But I think uh, we will continue because uh, that is why we are here. But you can... me cut in there, please. Yeah. Talking about what the order of Lagos just said a few days ago, I must with emphasis say that the order has no moral right to intimidate the evils, the Vietnamese in Lagos. It is quite obvious that it is on record that a half or even more of the properties in Lagos belong to the Igbos. It's incontestable. It's incontrovertible. If the other does not know, let him know it now, that Lagos is a Biafra territory. It's a Biafra annex. 
And no human creature, no human creature I repeat with stronger emphasis, no human creature can stampede the Hebrews out of Lagos. Lagos belongs partially to the Hebrews. Whether they like it or not. I know, and indeed I know, what is making the average Yoruba man very, very angry. Just because during the last Nigerian election, two Igbo people, one house, federal house, seats in Lagos State. And the average Yoruba man could not comprehend how an Igbo man would cause the river Niger come to Lagos State to win such federal seats. To them, it's unthinkable. But as an Igbo man, God himself has blessed us. Whatever we step our feet on, we are going to possess that particular land. And that is true. If we must go back to Zion, if we must go back to the other land, it will be voluntary. And no human being will stop us out of Lagos, whether we like it or not. The other threatened to drown the average Hebrew man in the lagoon is another statement, and it's a statement taken too far. I know, and indeed, as he knows, that he can never carry out that threat to any, any advantage. Is it impossible? The average Hebrew man I know is a coward. They can only talk and talk and talk. When it is time for action, you see him running and jumping the fence. I was in Lagos in far back 1993 during the Adela crisis. The builders were beating the dawns of war, thinking that the Igbos would be there to fight for them. But when they discovered the average Igbo man now was a, a vacating Lagos going back to the Afghan land, there was a Yoruba man. When it was time to run, it was the army on account of Yoruba land. My God rest his soul. Who was the first to run out from Nigeria? We let the Yorubans. When they saw that the Igbos had vacated, the average Yoruba man could not talk of the could not leave the drums of war again. The Yoruba man I know can only talk and shout and hoot. But when it is time for action, we will discover that it is a duplicate who talk. The owner of Lagos can never do more than he has done already. He can only talk and talk and talk. When it comes to drowning somebody in the lagoon, it is a Yoruba man, it is a mother who must be drowned. Still in 1993, I was there when the Yorubas, led by OPC, were making, trying to make letters from company for the average Yoruba man. The Bakasi boys had to leave Abba and Onicha, enter the Lagos there, and they drowned the, almost every average Yoruba man available. Even the Yorubas, when Bakasi boys crossed the river Niger, entered the Lagos to us, well, to chase him out of Lagos State. I am certain that when he comes to that again, the father of Lagos will be the first person to run. I am telling my fellow people, my fellow Biafras, they should not be frightened, they should not be intimidated. The other can only hook. They can only shout and make that noise. When it's time for action, we take the center stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother, for that great voice. That voice is very, very inspiring. I think uh, if you're listening to us wherever you are today, Biafra, I hope you're seeing reason why we've been talking that we need to start taking this bull by the horn, doing what we're supposed to do as Biafra. We've been neglected. We've been intimidated. They see us as nothing. It's like we don't have place in Nigeria. Nigeria is... Is not where we're supposed to belong. But the issue is, why can't they let us go? You rejected us. You rejected the what we belong to us. You said we have no place in your land. You you make sure that we don't exist. You try to ethnically clean us up from the face of the earth. Why not let us go so that we will go and actualize ourselves as a people what is wrong with our people in the other hand when you see all these things happening around you you see some people still say that what the so-called Abba did is the right thing what is wrong with our people that's the question so uh, uh, my brother i am very very uh, uh, uh motivated by your word if you listen to um our our general when he was saying he made mention of a, an, an evil proverb saying that a visitor, a person who is rejected by his people, they should allow him to go to see what to do with himself. That is the issue. But these people will not allow us. That is fair. That would be it. We know that we have no place in that entity called Nigeria. What is our fate? 
where are we going to start because do you know the worst aspect of it is that it is true that you will not push everybody into believing that we need Biafra but which way forward for our people there are certain things we need to do in this struggle that we've not done yet and there are certain things we Biafrans as a people supposed to do to, uh, to make these people who used to see us as half caste half Nigerian or half Biafrans to start seeing that we don't take bullshit please can you tell us what we have failed to do as a people that we need to do to put ourselves in places thank you thank you very much once again as a neighbor man as a dear friend i am of the strong view that what the evil man must do to have his honor restored is to think of home first we have to start making preparation on how to go home and home we must go the truth must be told our enemies do not want us the Yorubas do not want us the hazard do not want us yet yeah, when we want to go they say no they know the importance of an average evil man they value our worth when they threaten fire and brimstone, it's all what is called the local palace of Shekara. They know that the evil man, there will be no Nigeria. Whatever is the mission they're trying to carry out. It is quite obvious it's what we call Shakara. Just for example, it's just like in a in a building, under a roof, the different parts. We have different tenants. Every tenant is the independent of the other. It is because of any particular tenant, if you want to pack out that particular edifice, to pack out, and we will stop you. Nigeria is an entity, it's just a roof. We are no more comfortable with that road and we want to pack up. We want to go home to our fatherland. And yet, the landlord of Nigeria is saying no. Now, if you want us to remain in Nigeria, are you going to give us free, free food? Are you going to ask us to pay your rent? We don't want to get involved in all this. We want to go home where everything is free for us. I am certain that the evil man must go home. And on bended knees, they have standing barefoot on Uji Hill. Facing Igbo River, facing Anambra River, we have, to, we have to do some oblation. And then ask for forgiveness in whatever way we must have offended our ancestral spirits. From there we shall start. We have to go home and begin to make amends. Charity, they say, begins at home. We cannot think of bettering our own society when we live in foreign lands. Call expect, expect. Lagos is not our own, even though we have taken over. If we must correct Lagos, it will be voluntary and not by coercion. It's practically impossible. But then to your question, for evil man, for dear friends to move forward, we have to go home first of all. Think of ourselves. Know what we have done wrong to our ancestors, ancestral spirits, and know the necessary sacrifices we have to carry out for them to forgive us. So that we have to get their blessings. That wherever, wherever every day we go, the special deal with us. The evil man, I say, must only go home and then make some necessary sacrifices to reject the causes we must have incurred in the past. That's the first step we have to take. And beyond that, we can now form an entity, a very strong entity, an entity that the external force can never break. No matter the force, no matter the velocity. We have to stand firm. And once we stand firm as a single entity, we can then look, look our enemies face to face and say, to hell with you. And once we say that, our enemy shall be frightened. This is what I believe the average evil man, the average theater man, has to do at the very moment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that inspirational voice ah uh, i thank you very much it's it's you know there are certain voices when you hear in this struggle it makes you like wanna cry it's, it's it's like bring you a lot of emotion into you because 
there are certain things our people don't know that we need someone that will tell us our people don't know a lot of us and we say we are in the struggle a lot of people are in this struggle just struggling to to be part struggling to believe in what we are doing struggling even to be known as a biafra because most of us are not yet behaving biafra way so there are certain voices we need to be hearing in this struggle to get us motivated to inspire us to tell us where we are going because most of us don't know where they are going you understand so dear friends wherever you are today this voice is coming to you it's not just my own voice today but the voice dear friends need to be here okay my brother you are talking about we going home to do one thing or the other to atone the god to do you if you can remember a, a, in this particular struggle at the time they said biafra do, did atonement to the gods in case there is anything wrong with us or there is anything going wrong didn't you hear about that atonement and what do you think about that do you think we did it the right way or do you still we need to do another thing that is superior to that thank you once again I am quite certain that when that thing was carried out, it was not with genuine intention. I am quite certain again that those who did that never consulted the very very well before they did it. I think we have to start afresh. At present, we have sold our glories. At present, we have sold our consciences. At present, we have lost our values. We have nothing left. We have to start rebuilding. Like a mud wall, the entity has collapsed. We have to start laying the foundation once again. And that foundation means calling our people to order. Telling our people that no matter the efforts you make to be assimilated in the entity called Nigeria, you remain a stranger. That home is where our forefathers were buried. That home is where our mothers were buried. That home is where we have to go and we can never feel intimidated. Where there will be no fear. Home is a place where when we get down there, we look at our enemies eyeball to eyeball and say, Damn you, and you can never do anything. They then all prepared away. We have offended the Biafra spirits. Many of our people died during the last civil war defending our fatherland. Today, some of those ideas they are fought for have been relegated to the background. Our people are now dining with the enemy. Why must we be dining our, with our enemies when our forebears fought this particular enemy and died? What do you think of their spirits? If they are from your grave, Look at us today and see that we are dining with the very enemies that made it to lose their lives. What are we going to do? What are they going to tell us? That's the first thing, the first offense we have committed. Take for example, that maybe you have a wife or if a woman you have a husband, an enemy came and killed your partner and then invites you to dine with him and you are doing that. From the grave, what would the spirit of that particular person be saying? The problem we have in Ibo land, in Biafra land, is that we are dying with the very enemy that killed our people. They are spirits in the grave and crying. What are we doing? Not until we say no to our enemies, not until we tell our forebears that we are no more together with the enemies, that we are coming home. Then, shall we must have been making amends. And from that very moment, from the spiritual realm, for the land of the spirit, these people will now be coming to us to shower us with their own blessings and wherever day we go, they will remain with us. I have to say that we have to go back and tell them that we have offended and they should forgive us. But day in day out, wherever day we go, their spirit shall remain in use with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother, for that or uh, another inspiring speech from you. I think uh, Biafrans are listening. I think uh, we are getting it. And I think by God's grace, this word that is coming out today won't just go in vain. Because uh, as we all can see now, 
there's this fire on the mountain and it's not just a little fire there is a serious fire on the mountain and uh, i don't know um if our people are really taking this world serious and uh, we will take a short break and then we will be back and once we'll be back we will be going into another topic that is very important please don't go away stay tuned because we still have a lot to discuss today thank you don't go away stay right there because we will be back <music>
we welcome you back again to our studio biafra voice international in new york um we will be going back to our discussion of the day but before we do that you can call us to be part of what we are doing today call our studio line at plus one three four seven eight two nine eight eight four one three four seven eight two nine eight eight four one that's our direct line or you can just log into your skype it's easy add us bvi online call us or call us on biafra voice we will listen to you and then you can also join the discussion for today don't forget the people we have on the studio today is mazi egonu from germany and then I also hear the Ankara Onye Kachuku Jonathan Abbasim. Uh, we are now going back to the discussion today. Uh, as you know, we are discussing the place of the Biafran people in Nigeria. And if we are sure we are ready to go, what effort are we making? What have we failed to do? And what are we yet to do in order to proof that we are ready to leave that MTT called Nigeria. Call our studio right now and be part of it. Speak to us, drop us a message and we will read it through to all the listing of all Biafrans listing all over the world. If you are privileged to be part of this program, I'm telling you today you are blessed. We are Biafrans and we can wait. We are moving forward. We are going straight again to our, our our man today who is on the studio. Um, I want him to speak to the Biafrans, especially those who have offered anything, those who believe in this struggle, and those who believe that by the effort of us, those who are doing everything possible to unite Biafrans toward this particular purpose, toward this particular goal. And the thing is, I will also hear from you, what do you think we need to do now in order to unify ourselves, to be able to create a common goal, a common idea, a common ideology towards this struggle. Do you think it's possible moving into this struggle with a common idea instead of some people saying different things and that group saying a different thing in fact we saying different things all together what do you think we will do in order to be able to build a common ideology towards the freedom of Biafrans? yes thank you once again uh, to answer your question, I have to take give my answers you know, in sequence. First and uh, foremost, the media fans, the impulse must stop dancing discordant tones. We must stop dancing discordant tones. That is a major problem we have. We have a common purpose, a common mission each and every one of us wants to carry out. But our approach is what is making it seem unrealizable. Like I said earlier on at the beginning of this program, every average people man wants to be a leader. Not being a leader in the sense of true leadership, but having something sinister in mind. Some of our so-called leaders are there with the intent of defrauding their fellow evils, called them saboteurs. How can average Brad as an ideology to defraud his fellow Biafrans? This is the problem we have. We must first of all start telling ourselves the truth. And we really sincere in the pursuit of the ideals. Are we not trying to deceive ourselves? Just like Nabekano is right now doing. Moving from place to place, defrauding their friends in diaspora. 
From seeing heaven and earth at the end of the day, when it's time for Makabata, you will not see him there. Because he possesses the British passport that enables him to travel every part of the world without procuring visa. What of the people he is deceiving? Our brothers are in Malaysia, in Senegal, many parts of the world. We don't know what is happening in their far land. Today, Nam the Karu is moving up and handing, solving them of the little they have in the name of Biafra. As I am telling you now, after very many years of vodka, Nam the Karu has nothing to show for all the millions that's collected from helpless Biafrans. Are we going to continue like this all the time? That's why I say that we are not telling ourselves the truth. Some people are using the Biafra ideology to enrich them selfishly. That is not the spirit of a Biafran, you know, freedom fighter. We must tell ourselves the truth. Even here in Germany, from where I'm talking right now, some people try to move up and down in the name of Biafra, looking for whom to defraud. I find that unacceptable and it is intolerable. I forbid and I abominate that. Every average Biafran must be able to tell ourselves the truth. That is true. It's not what we use to enrich ourselves. Their first row is not an avenue for making a revenue. That is the problem we have. And when these things continue, our enemies continue to capitalize on this our weakness to taunt us. We have become porous. We have exposed ourselves to the details of our enemies. And they use, they use our analysis now to denigrate us. We have lost our dignity. We have lost our idols. When shall we begin to tell ourselves the truth? When shall we begin to see the next day noble as a fellow in the struggle? It is high time we stop all these clandestine moves. We must form an entity, a front. Let us have a leader. Go to the Bible. At a point when the Israelites of old knew that they were surrounded by very many enemies. There was no leader. Threatened, they gathered with one voice and they asked God, Give us a leader who will go before us and fight our war, just like all our neighbors. Look at that. Give us a leader. When shall the Igbos, when shall the Biafran people tell God, tell ourselves, Give us a leader, not leaders? Because once we have leaders fighting the same struggle, we shall be dancing discordant clothes. We want only a leader. We want a thing to talk for us. So that when their voice echoes, we must hear, we must obey. So that when their voice commands, on painted knees we shall be. So that when their voice says move, we move. When their voice says stop, we stop. These are the things we have to do. But when we begin to dance the same song, the same drum from different angles, everything sounds too discordant and it does not help the average evil man. When the enemies see all these things, they capitalize on them and break our rank and file. And once they break our rank and file, they break our heritage. And once they penetrate our heritage, we collapse. Dear God, may we never collapse before our enemies in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. It is time for us now to come together and form a united front. A front so formidable. We must make our ways first and foremost. Let us stop this game. From every angle, everybody shouting. Look at what happened some time ago. Who was he that tried to invent a Biafra for a Biafra radio station in Enugu? If you want to get a Biafra, you don't have to fight your own people. You don't have to destroy the property you have in Biafra land. We ask you to fight a Yoruba man, to fight a house of man. If you want to take over a radio station, take over my radio Nigeria. Nigerian television station, uh, uh, Nigerian television authority, take those ones that want to come to Enugu to invent a radio station. If you invent such a radio station, we will be in the background. We are not telling ourselves the truth. If we must get Biafra, we must first of all protect Biafra. Biafra. But when you cannot protect Biafra, you are fighting Biafra. When the alien comes, we will be in the background. This is the problem we have. We have to come together. We have to ask ourselves a question. We have to choose a leader and ask God to bless us with such a leader who will go before us to fight our war. 
But this leader shall not fight this war alone. We are there to back him up. He will only direct and we follow. Because in every battlefield, is that the commander that fights? The commander only gives instruction and his rulers will fight the, the war. That's how it's going to be. And once we are able to come together as an unbreakable entity, I must tell you that the enemies will be frightened when they hear our voice. Not even to see our face. When they hear our voice, they will be frightened. So that is it for now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother, for that wonderful statement you just made now. Um, I think uh, this world is really getting it. You are really get hitting it at the right place. Because we know, and the, the problem we Biafrans have is that we've not been able to tell ourselves the truth. Most of us know the truth, but we are polishing it. We don't want to come clean. I think... It is right time we come clean and see what our problems are and deal with it once and for all. We all knew what we've been passing through in this struggle all this while. And it won't continue. We must do something and that thing we need to do is urgent. We need to be a strong, reliable source that will motivate us towards achieving Biafra. It is no longer an issue that we have ridiculed this movement a lot. We have messed up this movement in many ways, but we still have time to amend it. We still have time to build a strong freedom movement for all Biafrans. Who are ready? Are you ready to be part of it? It is time we talk about how can we be able to build a single ideology towards Biafra freedom? Because that is the only thing we are lacking. All this enmity we are creating between ourselves, all this problem we are having with us is because of difference in ideology, difference in understanding, difference on what we think about Biafra freedom. But the only thing that holds us all together is we are all Biafrans and that we want freedom. Only that now, Ngwele Nine Mapu Amapu. So, but these things are the issue we should resort one another. All these people who are into this Biafra struggle with their selfish propagandas, time will come when they will answer for it. When they will give up their evils. Their evil flourish because there are people supporting them. Until people open their eyes and see that once they stop supporting these people, that we are good to go. So this is our problem. Now let's go into the next thing that I think which will be of a serious worry to all Biafrans. My brother, they say that Biafrans, that Biafra is not only meant for the Igbos, which I know you are aware of. But my question now is, how? Because that is where I think we have failed. That is where I think almost all the uh, uh, pro Biafra group felt. How can we be able to get this, our brothers from all the tribes to join in this struggle, to believe in what we believe? Or do you think the only way to do it, deal with it is to let them go so that we would say that uh, Biafra is only meant for the Igbos? Do we still really need these sad shots and the middle bells and part of the middle bell who are Biafrans to be part of this movement in order to achieve Biafra? Thank you once again. There could be different women, different wives, but the same husband. From this one man, come different children from different wives. And as a father, as a lord of the manor, every of the children belongs to you, no matter the mother that gave back to him. Whether the mother came from major land, whether the mother came from Igbo land, whether the mother came from Epic, that does not matter. At the end of the day, they answer their father's name. The remnants shall return to rebuild the walls of their fathers. 
Tell me about the HR people, Niger Delta, and part of our people that are in Benuest. All of us are children of the same heritage. We share common patrimony. We can never reject them. We can never deny them. They are part and parcel of us. Right from creation, right from time immemorial, from the primordial times, we have existed as one. It was only the enemy who came and created division by leading them astray. And without thinking, they believed the deceptive voice of the enemy. Today, I am happy to report that our brothers are not going back to their senses, that even right now, they are more different than us. We have to welcome them back. So together, we shall form a block. We have to expand our territory to accommodate them. They are part and parcel of us. Even though we are different mothers, we are the same father. The same blood flows in our in our veins. We can never say no to them. But how are we going to make them realize that we are father? We are the same children of the same father. It's not a question of calling for conferences. No. We have to pay them a visit to remind them of our heritage. We have to visit them from home to home, from house to house. We have to talk to them. We have to show them some of their marks on our faces, on our hands, on our bags, on our tummy. We have to tell them also to look at your hand, look on your tummy everywhere, and see the same mark you have. That is the very mark I also have. Which goes a long way to say that we are children of the same parentage. Look at them very, very well. There's no difference. The only difference appears that we don't live under the same roof. But the children of the same we must come together. We have to visit them. We, can, we don't have to reject them, no matter their mistakes. We need them as they need us. Because whatever they have belongs to us. Whatever we have, equally belongs to them. It's not time for us to take a division. There's no division. Today, I must tell you, they are not coming out. Probably you must have read. The present governorship as parent in River State, Mike, has been preaching Biafra for the past two days. Mm. Has been telling people that it's high time and the United the people and the Codigos come back to revive Biafra. They have come to realize there's no other name we have except Biafra, and there's no other home we have except Biafra. They have realized what we have been telling them. They are not hearing our voices before their ears were dead to hear it. But today, their ears are open and they can hear us. Now that they have come back like a prodigal children, we must, work, we must open our arms and welcome them and say, Welcome home, my brothers, my sisters. And when we are together, we shall face our enemies. They are about a pastor of us, we are about a pastor of them, my brother. This is my question, this is my answer to your question. So all of us are well, and there's no division. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother, for that wonderful statement you just made now. Um, it is a fact that we all know that uh, in between brothers who are in a, in a war front, as we know in the past, you know, Philip Ephion was the assistant to um, our general as a then. So there is no way we rule them out at this particular moment, even though most of us disappointed us at the at the middle of the war. But uh, they are still our brothers, they are still our sisters, they are still our brethren. We will always get to them to be part of what we are doing. And uh, I believe so much that when we are able to unify, we can be able to conquer our enemies because our enemies are many. And they come in different colors thank you very much my brother for that wonderful statement uh you just made i think i believe our people are listening to you and then uh, the most important is not all about listening that's our problem but listening and be able to apply what you've learned this is a class all this thing we are doing here is like a university you are here to learn you are here to listen and hear the truth and this is where we send the truth to you all. Biafra will come when we do the right thing. When we unify ourselves and work out our manners towards Biafra freedom. Thank you very much, my brother. 
I appreciate your words. Your words are strong and effective. And I thank you very much for making our people to be able to get this word from you today. I think um, it is a good thing that is coming to us. We will be taking a short break and then we will be back. Uh, please don't go away because we are coming back with a lot for you. And then, you know, we will be ending up in the legs and in the next 25 to 30 minutes. Please don't go away. Stay right there. We will be back for other things. Still, don't go away. Stay tuned. But is willing at all times, as in the past, to resolve its conflict with Lagos at the conference table. The Organization of African Unity has shown itself insensitive to our suffering and incapable of resolving Men, the crisis. Women and children who gave their lives for freedom and liberation, the People's Army of Biafra. Men, women, and children who gave their lives for freedom and liberation, the People's Army of Biafra. We don't have the power, but we never say never. Sit and it will be in catch you when you run in. The sun never rose again. Be off for all. Do you remember? Be off for all. Be off for all. Do you really want to tell the story? The story. The story. Yeah. Be off for all. Can you remember? Be off for all. Make one option. Just Do you really want to hear the story? The story. There was a country. The story. I was born in the north and I grew up in the north. 1967, Bukwa Kuko Nachiko. Nemo Karamo. Namo Karamo. Pasupa Mokara Omo Moni Hina Oko Nyapur Kawa. Who no did not go no, cause who no 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 go cry. The days were like yes, the yes never end. The end never came, but it came like the rivers Moses struck a Egypt. Oh, bara bido sibe, ube ne bido bube, obu ni we bido bube, bube ni we. Ask for the message of Allah for the agony of the child. Oh, yes. The after all, do you remember the after all? The after all. Do you really want to tell the story? The story. The story, the offer all. Can you remember the offer all? The offer all. Do you really want to hear the story? The story. The story Ya for up, ya for a na rari ya na bagana Nkiji chi say ike Makana chi na chiji Makana nkiji ka Cause the tear is still the drum The index still in the trigger Your blood still the cry Your name shall survive From a filler generation As the father passed the story to the young son Tell me With the death she overcame her The shadows still the clash her But the valors of our leaders But shall never be in vain her Najika, ya ansa, ete batara soye ya Nami kuma ka salama La samu hakur in the half of a yellow sun Listen to the Afra, listen to the children And we shall live again The Afra, can you remember the Afra? The Afra, do you really want to hear the story? The story, the story all your fighters, all your tanks, and all your soldiers against the boy, holding a stone, standing there, all alone. In his eyes, I see the sun. In his smile, I see the moon. And I wonder, I 
only wonder who is weak and who is strong, who is right and who is wrong. And I wish, I only wish that the truth has a tongue. The story, the story, the story, the offer all. Can you remember the offer all? Do you really want to hear the story, the story, the story? The OG at Jesse, Okayabu Haniba, Alexander Madiabu, Oboyabu Commander, Major General Ephia, Okayabu Onisi. Major General Patrick, Okwayabu Izogu, Navy Captain Anuku, Okwayabu Mama's Boy, Gabriel Anyebuna, Okwayabu Captain Blood, Richard Hieto, Okwayabu Dick Tiger, Colonel Obogu Kalu, Colonel Ademo Yega, Colonel Michael Evans, Colonel Olisakwe, Colonel Okwechime, Colonel Owatwegu, Brigadier Command Wawo, Brigadier Tony Eze, Colonel Victor Banjo, Colonel M.M. Omora, Colonel Festus Akaha, Colonel Patrick Awuna, Colonel Judas O.K., Inspector P.I.O.K.K., Colonel Usudo, Colonel Udiaja, Colonel Achiba, Colonel Oguniwe, Colonel Dihanacho, Colonel Obiora, Colonel Opara, Colonel Wajeye, Colonel Eze, Captain Stain and Von Rassen, Okofabu Masenaris, Chalo, Ikemba, Okwayabu General, Ezibo, Boruburu, Chalo, Okwayabu Chiogu, General, Chukwe Meka, Ojimebu, Ojuko, Trebo to you, Onyike. Me offer all, can you remember me offer all? Do you really want to hear the story? The story, the story. Which presumes that there is only one side to a dispute and can go to every length to appease that side cannot be expected to be fair, objective, and just. The present conflict can now be resolved by individual states taking a if you're just joining us, this is your Biafra Voice International broadcasting from New York, the United States of America. Uh, and you shouldn't forget that you are hearing my voice, Onye Kachuku Abbaslim, and the voice of my, one of us also from Germany, Mr. Um, e -E, Mr. Egonu Obidi who lives there in Germany and also the anchor of Biafra Voice in Germany. If you are still joining us and you want to make any kind of contribution to what we are saying today or you are finding it difficult to join, just click on the link that is posted on the Facebook, on your Twitter or anywhere you see it, click it and then you are good to go. If you want to call us, you can use your Skype line get us on skype line on bbi online or you can call us on our landline or direct line on 347-829-8841 today we are discussing the place of france in nigeria if we know we don't have a place in nigeria what is our fate do we really want france? do you want to leave the unholy marriage that buys Bia France and Nigerians. If so, which way forward? That is actually what we are talking about, and that is why we are here today. And I have in my studio today uh my brother Mr. Obidi Egonu, who is the anchor of BVI in Germany, to keep discussing this issue with me today. My brother, are you there? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy you're there. <laughs> you know. Most of the times, the way these things does, we will know when you're there or not. But I'm very happy you responded uh, quickly. Uh, you know, we're still looking at this now. Now, 
let's go straight to the issue that was raised by this particular man mr um uh, the oba of lagos who said uh, uh, um that uh, the if if the Igbos, which are Biafrans, don't vote for his man the person he personally handpicked that will end up in lagoon i know many people see us as being ridiculous or uh, that this man is funny funny but i want you to i want to hear from you from your own perspective perspective what did you see this man's noise making do, does he do you think he look real or do you think biafrans has to do something to caution him what message do you have for biafrans living in lagos against this other and whatever he said well thank you once again well in all my life even during the time i lived in lagos up to today i have never taken any yoruba man serious except in the field of treachery as far as i know the chances of the of the cure of Lagos State, of Lagos rather, is rather the advantage of a noise maker. And I do pray. I know indeed, before he stood up to make such utterance, he must have been well prepared. I know him very, very well. He is so well grounded in right taking. He cannot exist without taking something what they call a gunja in Yorubala. But take it from me. He can only back. He's a toothless bulldog. He only wanted to gather attention, which he has succeeded. And that is done. That is it all. Nothing beyond that. If it is time for action, he will be the first person to jump the fence. If you know from history, Yorubas are not to be cowards. But when you see them talk, 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 if you don't have the leader, you feel intimidated. The other I see is a noise maker. I'm happy to inform you that today, because of that particular threat he issued, every Igbo man in Lagos is now asked for a show now. They are now mobilizing. Calling meetings, sensitizing all the evil people in Lagos, not only evil, even people from the Niger Delta, sensitizing them, telling them the battle line has been drawn, and indeed it has been drawn. The average evil man is never afraid of the Yoruba man. We live in their land, that is true. But we can never be afraid of them because God Himself, in His infinite mercy, has given up that land to possess, and the possess we have. People cannot be ready. Therefore, I tell my fellow people, my fellow Biafras, not to be intimidated because it's not today we start hearing the voice of a young man. The noise makers, I don't take them serious at all. The only young man I text to the dead one, take it or leave it. And I believe every average Biafra, every average man, thinks as I do. So we have nothing to fear. Come Saturday, we are going to measure strength. At the end of it all, it will be the upper who will get drowned in the lagoon and not the evil man. The blood of a single evil man is worth 20 Yoruba men, whether we like it or not. I repeat, the blood of a single evil man is worth more than 20 Yoruba men, whether we like it or not. And so, Oba Akira to come and threaten an evil man, I tell you that as an act. He has no power. Take for example, again, let's go by regular like this. You remember there was a time Jesus Christ, our Savior, was brought before Pontius Pilate. Of course, this is the season. We are just commemorating that. And Pilate, sitting on his you know, throne, majestically, with pride and satisfaction, asking, Do you, are you the king of the Jews? Do you know I have the power to condemn or release you? Christ looked at him ridiculously and said, You don't have such power. I repeat, you don't have such power unless it's given to you by God. But Bakiro does not have 
have such power. Just say, I don't know, and he doesn't possess that power. But the evil man possesses that power. And that is why today we have taken over Lagos State. We have Lagos State. If they don't know, their last election is an eye opener. So, if two evil people to come to Lagos and then one, two federal seats, what else are, we, what else are they telling us? How can they claim Lagos belongs to them? So, like I said earlier, there's nothing the man can do. He was only trying to pull his catharsis, his accumulated emotion, venting his spleen that an evil man or evil people have taken over the God's state. And there is no other thing he can do except to do And that is it all. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother, for that wonderful statement you've just made. Uh, that is a... Uh, that's a, uh, an inspiring one. Yes, our people should know that, um, yes, we have really taken over Lagos. But some of us, as you know, are still, just like we have in the past, we have an infajuna sabotaging the process of the Biafran freedom. We still have many of them, dear, who are sabotaging the process. You understand me? Don't tell you, you're supposed to know, and we're supposed to know that even to at uh, this particular thing this man is saying, there are still some of us there who are supporting him. Who say, uh, if you want to live in Lagos, you should listen to what this man is saying uh, because he owns the land. If you don't like it, you go back. Is an evil man saying the same thing? What can we do with those people? What do you have to say to those people making such statements? Is changing, is what is obtainable everywhere. Don't forget that some of those who claim to be their friends or people today have a dual identity. Their fathers could be Yorubas or their mothers could be Yorubas and vice versa. So when you see such people behave in that way, it should not surprise you. But an average evil man, a full blooded evil man, will not think of supporting Yoruba man against fellow evils. But even when we have such people like Judas, a time shall come. When, after we realize they cannot beat us, they have to join us. A time shall be when we say, when the whistle will be blown, everybody shall be run bound. Then are they going to read the left behind the Yoruba land? That will be the time. Everybody will know that indeed these are people, these are egos. They need to sabotage us, make it for a bad reason. It is a matter of time. They will give account of their stewardship. And when the train shall move, like a battery ram, we are going to clear every obstacle on our way. We don't have to be afraid. We possess everything. We don't have to be afraid. We know what you are doing. We don't have to be afraid. We know where we are going. We don't have to be afraid because we know, we know what we are going to achieve. All we want is for our brothers, our sisters, to understand us, have patience with us, and answer our calls whenever we are going to come out. So, in the meantime, we don't have to take the uh, uh, actual for anything. We are very good. I know the very fast. So, the evil man will continue to do what he's doing. Just like they say in evil land. Anna na wewe. Anna na bari. Oba kero na wewe wewe. Oni wewe na bari. Evil man can never be intimidated. If you want to get something from an evil man, it's not by threat. You can only appeal to him. Not to him softly, he will sympathize with you. But when you come with threat, you are wasting that time. Not an evil man. The evil man I know. You can never intimidate an evil man. Even if it's the youngest one, you rather agree to him. But when you come with threats, he will tell you that he don't fit me to hell with everything. That's what I have to say for now. And please, my uncle man, uh, this might be the last uh, questions I'll be taking because I have uh, some other commitments here. You know, I'm a divided man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're actually... <laughs> Uh, actually my brother we are coming we are almost coming to the end of today's broadcast anyway because we are rounding up it's just five minutes to the to the time uh fellow beer friends wherever you are uh, this is me onye kachuku jonathan abaslin with here in my studio mr uh obidi uh, obidi egono from germany he's the anchor of the german studio of biafra voice international and he's a great Biafran, as you all can hear from him. 
uh we will be coming to the end of today's broadcast we still have a lot of them there in germany but he make up his time <laughs> as dogged as he is you hear him saying everything you also people who have, must have heard him today will know that he's not someone to play with when it comes to the biafran issues and he's also a strong Igbo man an organizer of the Igbo people in germany Ah, we thank you very much, my brother, for joining us today. It has been a great time spending here with you. I will join you tomorrow in your Germany broadcast so that we see things move the way we want it. Um, to you and you who is listening to us today, it's been a great time spending this few moments with you. You are a Biafran. Go out there and preach Biafra. That's what we are telling you today. Join the Biafran volunteers because we are taking the, the freedom to the grassroots. And I bet you, once... We are able to get these particular things we are asking for. That's where the Biafran freedom struggle starts. Thank you very much, my brother. Uh, let me just leave you for a while so that you go and do whatever you want to do. And then we'll continue with what you are doing today. Thank you very much for being part of us. And may God bless you. As you've spoken today, I believe by God's grace, all of them will listen to you and apply most of us with most of the things we've spoken today into activities. Thank you very much for joining us and have a blessed night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have anything to tell Bia France as the last word, maybe? Well, I wish my fellow Bia France good job wherever they are. I wish them progress. I wish them harmonious life, harmonious existence. I wish them progress. I wish them every good thing in life as they wish themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother, and have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, fellow Bia friends, uh, we, as you know, we are uh, one of us who been joining me in the anchoring this studio just left. Um, we also want to tell you that um, our director, the media director of Biafra Voice International, who is also our representative under the Spring Council of Elders, is not available at this moment to talk to our elders because he have other things he is putting together in Biafra land, especially concerning our Biafra volunteers and our activities in Biafra land. He will be back shortly after all the after putting things together. We still have a lot of them scattered all over the countries and very soon they all will be coming here to join us in the studio. Please do well tomorrow to join us in our Biafra in our German studio as we'll be bringing you another special broadcast to tomorrow, especially when it has to do with our freedom fighting when it has to do with us as Biafra, the things we don't know that we're supposed to know. Don't forget, this today program you're hearing is coming to you from Biafra Voice in New York, in United States of America. We will always be there. If you have any message, anything to tell us, please do well to visit our website at www.bbimediaipod.com go to the contact page write to us tell us what you think about our broadcast and we will get back to you and we are subscribe to our news we'll be getting our news across to you and that is why we are here and that is why everything is all about biafra and we believe by your fault and my effort we will get there please don't forget this is biafra voice international in germany and i am your anchor for today Onye Kachuku Jonathan Abbaslim, thanking you for joining us. Please do well to join us tomorrow as we still have a lot coming our coming to you tomorrow from our German studio. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed night wherever you are. We are closing, but we are still on. We'll be playing the music, Biafra music, entertaining you till it's done. Please don't touch the die.
by recognizing her right to existence and urging on Nigeria to abandon her war of aggression against an injured people. Having failed on all scores, the Nigerians have raised the bogey of a minority in Biafra being forced into independence against their wish. This again is far from the truth. Our people, irrespective of their ethnic grouping, have shown conclusively their commitment to and support of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Biafra by their sacrifice in blood and contribution to the war effort.